that time he was there was uh, no HR safety and in the Institute of Thoracic Medicine he was there like he recently at that time come from Qatar I think he is the, there in the, and from there he was teaching us and also every time before the HRCT and fibrotic bronchoscopy was there he was teaching us lot of things still I remember the idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis an old lady with clubbing and a velcro crack still I remember he used to teach us meticulously and I am really happy and proud to be chairing an oration to be delivered by uh, Anantan sir I am the convener for a city pulmonary meet for so many years for almost 10 years here the Never said the enthusiasm of Professor Chandek sir and Anandandar is to be mentioned. Every time, even in the era of Professor CND, he used to present cases and uh, used to fight with the Professor CND, whatever thing. And every time he is willing to learn so many things. And his special interest is occupational lung disease, where so many times he had given us many uh, occupational lung disease, pneumoconiosis, other things, which he had found in the ESI hospital. And every time he had shared the knowledge with us, Really, I am proud to be here, sir, sharing your question. And uh, I, I uh, hand over the mic to our fellow uh, chat person. He introduced the speaker. Dr. V.S. Anandan, sir, Alun, consultant, pulmonologist, ESC hospital, and Chennai. He graduated from Delhi University in 1976. He did a post graduation. Chest medicine from Madras University. He is the associate fellowship in the industrial ministry of labor, government of India. Right now, presently working in the ESA hospital, Kekanagar, Chennai. Now, he is a senior consultant in respiratory medicine and occupational medicine. He has a voluminous of experience, roughly about 30 years of experience in pulmonology and occupational medicine at ESA, Kekanagar. He has presented several papers in various conferences, state, national and international conferences. Then he is a recipient of eminent teacher award by the CD Physician Association. I welcome you, sir. Uh, thank you so much. Kind words to Dr. Kumar. I don't remember actually what he told about the education and I I always thought when I when I when I uh, teach I learn actually. you to learn about. So today's topic, first of all, let me place a record. <coughs> Sorry. Before that, I want to, this Orochian endometrist, one that you already have seen, Dr. Rema Mendesen, uh, wife of uh, Professor Sudhaka, my colleague, who used to, he was in uh, MMC 94 to 97, he was a senior MD, and uh, his wife on his, uh, Remembrance, this uh, endowment lecture has been created. Dr. Kema Vinesh was already you have seen in the PowerPoint. Born in Trivandamali, completed an MBBS MMC, then did an MD pharmacology, and she is an associate professor from Dr. Ramchandra. Unfortunately, she passed away in 2012 after prolonged illness against uh, breast cancer. And uh, his survived his husband, Sudhakar, he is now former HOD of Ramchandra and only son, Balaji. Both are known to me, they are from Ayyipatthani. And he had created this endowment and I think every year we should remember the good soul which I departed by the way of uh, listening to a prominent uh, person on the field. So I think uh, we all should remember uh, Dr. Hema Mendes on this day, uh, this endowment has been created. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much once again. In fact, uh, uh, you know, lecture, Dr. Hema Mendes, she died very early for me because of breast cancer. I'm very happy that I'm able to give some kind of a teach. Uh, I got an oration uh, on why journey in Parmanj in 30 years. Actually, in fact, it was a, again, once again, today is it, we have completed 36 years of continuous TV program. 36 years, not only in the 36 years, continuously every monthly program, uninterrupted. You see, today, 416, I think. Uh, uh, we did 432 meet. The great art is a great thing of any branch, and uh, of course, from the other side, we will once again ask you a big hand. In fact, he, he, he actually, I was, when he asked me to give a lecture, I was actually having a holiday in Vaisakhapur. 
I said, sir, I am in high school, I want to have high school. So, uh, he said, no, do it. So that's a stimulus, you know, for me to start when I was a very short notice at the first time. May I go to the last slide? Uh, my topic is a very big topic, but uh, like, it was 6 o'clock already and we are the back end of the year after the session. Next. My journey in permanent medicine. He was also arrested by Dr. Chandrasekhar. Next. Now, it spans over three decades. Uh, we were called TB specialist or physiologist. This is with wasting. We are called TB people. I mean, when I did a PG, it was considered as a, he is a TB man. So, TB is a wasting disease. But it is much more than tuberculosis. Now, pulmonary is one of the most sought out of PG courses now, unlike the previous decades. See, the two years ago, I remember when I did the diploma, I was telling there were four tracks. That's what it was, but now it has come a long way. I thought I would share my experience with you. Next. Now, we are going to talk about the last subject. It's the last subject. I can't cover all. I just wanted to cover only tuberculosis and bronchial asthma and chirurgery. I am not covering lung cancer. A lot of uh, uh, sites were made of lung cancer. Best to leave to the oncologist to do that. But I will tell you what are the tuberculosis matters before and now. Next. Still continues to be a health problem in third world countries, Asia and Africa. A lot of problems in Europe, a lot of problems in America or Australia. In Australia, I went for a WHO fellowship. They have not seen the case of tuberculosis. They do not know how tuberculosis looks like. My doctor is in Germany. There also, when the TB case comes, it's a big wonder. It's a rare case for them. So it's very common here. More prominent in sub-Saharan Africa and India. It was a major problem in the advanced country. Actually, a lot of luminaries in the West died of tuberculosis. But after the uh, advent of chemotherapy and also after the after they, they became uh, prosperous, prosperity is another thing which, which, which eliminates the tuberculosis. Now, many medical students in the West, I told you, in Australia, they are uh, they are hardly seen to be case. In fact, any backache comes with an instruction of the spine, they think malignancy. In one case, I remember, when I went to Australia, somebody was telling me that the patient was having a lady from India. Mostly they are from Indian origin, we should have. They went to their doctor, local doctor in Australia. She, she had a backache, she had a backache. Kept on treating her back end and then she was she came walking and she was actually lifted. She was you know, so ill. She actually about to start the mother. She thought it was a rusted. Then luckily another Indian doctor was there and he started hit him and his treatment should be fully on. This case for her transition also, I'm sure that after six months she will walk it. Next. Little bit of criminology. It's uh, most prevalent in sub Saharan Africa and Southeast Asia. Little more common in East Europe than West Europe. Scandinavia has the lowest number of TB cases. Now, the latest plan by the Government of India, 2025, by Nandan, sir, uh, our honorable Prime Minister, end TB for 2025. It's a very ambitious plan. I don't think it's not going to. I mean, Okay, that is what the plan letters is, but it is really not going to, uh, I don't think it will happen in 2025. It's a very uh, wrong thing, but anyway, we have some kind of a design. It has been, the incidence has been reduced actually marginally from 289 per lakh to 213 per lakh. And whatever it also has reduced, but still it is very high. Extra pulmonary TB is on the rise, especially in Uno TB, Skeletal TB. Now, I, what is my personal observation? It's my journey, so I can quote that. The more number of, the ratio of pulmonary tuberculosis and extra pulmonary tuberculosis has changed. Previously, pulmonary tuberculosis was more. Now, I am seeing little more of extra pulmonary tuberculosis, particularly lymphonic tuberculosis. This is my personal observation. We don't have any statistics. I try to take out the statistics, but I do not get Next. The diagnosis of TB is a vast improvement, actually. The diagnosis have become uh, very easy now. 
moderator back process. In the, in the bygone days, as per the old National Technical Control Program guidelines, when I was a PhD student, scooter microscopy, AAP was the main, the main modality for diagnosis. Put on AAP, that was the main modality. You were not even x ray because those times, even if they x ray was not available in the district park. I'm talking about three decades back. Now, of course, x ray and MRI and CT are available in every district. So it's a different scenario now. Now, they x-ray tests are also important to do very sensitive but not specific. We used to have a combination of x-ray test and and scooter examination for the diagnosis in those days. Now, the situation is totally different now. Every single district has got even city facilities. Next. Now, scooter culture and sensitivity. We used to have LJ medium. Kumar will remember that. We had a solid medium, green medium. That was the one which was for, for student culture and sensitivity. It took very long. It took about six to eight weeks. For extra culture tuberculosis, it's based only on extrapathological tissue. We, we do what is called non ACD necrosis, that is the way we diagnose for extra culture tuberculosis. Manual test, very useful for latent TB and VIT age group and ESR. Now, manual has, you know, they always say that manual they don't use, but please use manual test even now. I got, they got their own value, though they say non specific, but still. Late Pro Deiran used to give a lot of importance and I totally agree with him that it is an additional, it is an additional uh, aid, action aid, it's not only thing, it only really indicates late TB infection, infection and disease. Next. Now the current diagnostic methods have, there is a marked change. It is not at the microbiological level, it is at the, it is at the molecular level diagnosis, TB at the molecular level. Gene expert, it's all, the actual gene expert, the technical term is CPNAT, cartridge based nutric acid amplification test. This is based on the DNA probe. So, this has markedly improved the diagnostic accuracy. The cost is very high, but the government subsidy is about 2000 now. But it is available free in all the government institutions. Please remember that. Gene expert is available in all the government institutions. Medicines are available in the very good part of the country. No need to worry about it. It's a very smart woman, very happy about it. Basically, when the blood shortage was there, here now, every single drug is available. Now, what is the advantage of this current method? It detects very early, but it is very sensitive as well as specific. Even uh, this gene expert, uh, less than 24 hours, you can get the result. And reflamation resistance can be detected early. You get a lot of MDRT drugs. Therefore, this gene expert test can be used for directing the reformation and iron resistance, MPRT also, very early. Both sensitivity and specificity is higher than the conventional student to examination of the gene expert. It can be used for extra phonological results. Please remember that gene expert not only for student, only blood it don't give. Blood test don't give for gene expert. You can give a tissue, put it in the, put it in the uh, normal saline. Like surgeons are there, bone tissue, genital, and uh, like uh, intermittent biopsy tissues, lymph node, any tissue also, uh, they can detect tuberculosis. Acetic fluid? Acetic fluid also. Pleural fluid also, but less sensitivity. But, but it is can be, except CSF also. CSF get very less. All this, except for uh, perhaps urine and uh, blood. Urine, I'm not sure. Urine also, no. Uh, yeah. Urine and blood, these are the two things. Don't you, uh, don't take the best sample for the expert. Don't make the error, it's got no value. You want it only for, but it's very sensitive for the next. Now there is something called gold quantiform. Here the blood sample is taken. It has got, to me it is the same value as manco actually. It doesn't indicate active disease. It indicates only late infection. Again, it's a very costly test. Blood sample is taken, but however, I would not recommend it for a diagnosis. It is only for latent TB infection. Just the same value as man. Now, for tuberculosis culture and sensitivity, the solid medium, LG medium is now replaced by liquid medium. Now, LG medium takes about six to eight weeks or even more. But now, with this LG medium, MG, please remember MG, just have only, MG is a 
Within two weeks, you'll get the culture and sense to yourself. But please remember that the suspicion is very important. But Tanushekar had presented a case where it was, you know, Tibukus was should, should have been suspected. So still, I would say the clinical diagnosis is also very important for Tibukus. Next. Now, a word about MDR tuberculosis is on the rise. What is MDR TB? It's a laboratory diagnosis, basically. Uh, it is it is resistant to INH and it's called MDR TB. Now, one more drug, XTR, extremely drug resistant tuberculosis has come. This is seen in Mumbai, more than Chennai, in Mumbai they have detected. It's resistant to rifampicin, INH, plus one of the fluoropinolones, plus one of the amino acids. These are, this is called extremely resistant tuberculosis. We will look to treat, but this is also seen in some in pockets of Mumbai. Next time. Now, management of tuberculosis. A big change has taken place. Man, a lot of changes. Now, long years before the discovery of anti medication, we only had sanitaria, fresh air, and instead. Our uh, late professor, I mean, uh, Dr. Jawala Nehru, his wife, was, she died of tuberculosis. She was in sanitarium in Sweden. There was no prompt treatment. As is, she died of tuberculosis. A lot of uh, 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 celebrities have died of tuberculosis before the advent of this chemotherapy. National TV program before Rifampicin era. That was for 12 months when we did the PG. Daily regimen was INS and Baraka salicylic acid plus the exambutol. We also had bimetric regimen that time also. SM, streptomycin, and INS. You were twice a week, I remember. This, what is performed the dots? They used to come to our chair and they take the medicine. Now, then the second phase is the Rifampicin era, where we introduced short course chemo chemotherapy, four drugs for two months and two drugs for four months. Then we came intermediate regimen, DOTS therapy. Third phase is DOTS therapy. That means directly observed therapy for two months, short course. DOTS therapy. You ask the patient to come uh, to the uh, and give the medicine. And this is Now the latest, once again we are reverted back to the daily uh, Please remember that we are reverted back to the daily regimen. We got a good stock of medicine. Depending on the weight, it will predict it to the other age group, it's available. So excellent and many the drugs are available. I mean, it's available through in every nook and corner of the, our state. I can say that. And uh, they give they all four drugs I have to give them in, in the nook. TB treatment in two phases, continuation phase and uh, uh, intensive phase and continuation phase. Intensive phase for two months and continuation phase for four to six months or more. So two phases of tuberculosis, uh, tuber please remember, that time we give four drugs in the intensive phase, then we can reduce the drugs. The previously we are excluding Ithamadol in the continuous phase. Now we give Ithamadol also in the continuous phase. So this is the latest, that is. Very old edition, the latest edition is available. <coughs> but if you ask, 
Nowadays, very easy to just go for Amazon. Actually, I have found that any book, even rare books are available in Amazon at cheaper rate also. So please get hold of it. It's not a very big fat book. It's very it's about 400, 300, 400 pages only. But it gives you a good concept of your price. Please get hold of this book. And you can give it, read like a, it's a question as a form. So you can read it very easily and you can occur. I wish to love this book. You know, we don't read, uh, we use this book even now. Next. Now this is the finding which is there is my personal observation. In ESI, we do a lot of employees in the town, no? This is not given in the books, not given in the literature that I tried. The incidence of tuberculosis, both pulmonary and extra pulmonary, is higher among the workers in the living industry. You get a lot of cases from uh, leather goods, shoes, jacket, leather bags. These tailors, you know, they do this. I get a lot of cases of, from this industry, particularly the females. Sir. They, they get both pulmonary and extra pulmonary. Please ask for occupant history. If it is leather means, you will think about tuberculosis. And they, they, they present the ATP pattern. <coughs> Actually, I have a little, then I should have presented a bit. only with case control study we can prove this. But this is a personal observation. So please uh, keep this in mind. I'm sure nobody, nobody disputed this when I presented in the Burmaji uh, meet. But as Dr. Kumar also, Dr. Kumar, we have not no case control study. Now it is available. In, there is no other study done earlier. When PG comes, if they can do this, actually, this will be a really order. And it is not normal. It is a woman's only. We give a normal drug study. Then we come to the bronchial asthma and COPD. These are the two main things which we manage as a pathologist is to be maintained. Lung cancer, we, we diagnose lung cancer, but the chemotherapy and other things is said by the oncologist. But we do chemotherapy, we give in our ward, but we will diagnose, after diagnose, and palliation is very important. For lung cancer, is palliation, we, we relieve the symptom. If there is a, if there is a fusion, Come in this year, we put the extra cost of and deal with this. That's important. And still, I would say that as I have seen, we have given chemotherapy also, but we are not having to, I mean, as far as I am concerned, not much as taking the prognosis. We have seen, we are dying after that. Next. Bronchial asthma and COPD. There have been a worldwide increase in asthma and COPD in the last three decades. I am talking about three decades. 10% of the worldwide asthma is in India. We get 10% of asthma in India. The cause of industrialization and environmental pollution being the main cause of increase in COPD and asthma. The prevalence rate, 2.5% of the population of all age groups. A sharp increase in cellular asthma. Cellular asthma, pediatrician may see the chart. The cellular asthma is increased by 10%. Next. Now, the difference between asthma and COPD. Asthma is fully reversible, COPD is partially reversible. Asthma occurs in injury age group, COPD usually more than 40 years. COPD associated with smoking, very strong. The recent observation is now, there are asthma variations, genotypes and genotypes. Please, these days we use the word overlap syndrome. This is a recognized term because sometimes, you know, the treatment of COPD is like different from asthma. But we have seen a lot of overlap syndrome. Because we don't give steroids for COPD, we give steroid and asthma. But my own personal observation is that some overlap will be there between asthma and COPD, and therefore there is a fair, we can give a fair trial of steroid even in COPD also. It's not there in books, but it's my personal observation for overlap syndrome. The significant percentage of obstetric iron disease which show features of both COPD and bronchial. This is overlap syndrome. Next one. Now, diagnosis of asthma. How do you diagnose? Clinical and experimental. Again, clinical always is important. You, don't, you can't miss out the clinical aspects of asthma. That is what, you know, variation, which is a seasonal uh, exaggeration and everything. And next is, of course, for different diet, you require experimental. Those days, we use drum experiment. We were in, uh, when I was in, in the GH and where we worked with drum experiment, I, I was remembering it. And, uh, uh, but presently, electronically operated. Compact experimenters have made a big impact in the diagnosis and management. It's really a big boon, I would say, that it has come. Uh, very compact. Next. This is the, uh, I think I got from internet. Now it's not there. This is, we used to use this. 
this is tracing like this, it is very tough. There are big numbers of next year. We used to go like this and we have seen this in three years. Next year. Now this is the fact. So easy now. And this is the compact for next year. Now then you come, we are also next step is digital parameter also come. Very handy. Then use it next. Micro digital parameter. So this is all advancement in the diagnosis of my using parameter next. And this is a use as parameter is low voltage. I would prefer digital is not, I would prefer this kind of a parameter where you have got pro value tracing. It is very important. We use it in our ESI. Flow volume tracing is very important. By flow volume curves, you can know what type of volume. Next. Now, this is a peak flow meter. It is there for a long time, but you can use it as an obvious practice. It will tell you the peak flow rate. And it's just like our GP instrument for human volume is used here. This is for asthma, and COPD, and for lung diseases, we use this. Next. Management of asthma undergone a sea change in last three days. Old indicates only oral medications are available. In severe asthma induced injections, steroid to see natural asthma management. We used to see a lot of fishing cord cases. Moon is now moving afraid of steroid. Now we must see, we are seeing much less because of the Indian steroid. Uh, the dose is much less. Previously, when we were doing you know, PGs, we used to see a lot of fishing cord cases with that because the system is steroid. But now people the, the, the patient do use on his own, it's different. Doctor will not prescribe now. We use inhaler. If inhalers are really replaced, it's still steroid. Next. Those three oral medicines in this treatment. Xanthin, Derivalin, tablet injection were used. Beta agonist. Sarbutamol only was available. No injection even for Sarbutamol. Instead of asthma injection, we used to do injection adrenaline for subclinical dystrophy. For state of asthma injection, we used to do injection adrenaline for subclinical dystrophy. It is a risk of cardiac complication. People have, there is a risk uh, of uh, uh, cardiac complication. Now, steroids, both oral and injective oral. Uh, these are the, in those days. Some of the medicines, we call it in Amraxone and Asclusation. They are also available now. This is, this is safe. Previously, from 60s, it is the uh, molecule is there. You are also used it very useful, you know. But this, the uh, other one is seed chain. Next. Now, what are the medications for asthma and COPD now? Inhalation treatment is a mainstay of treatment. A wide range of inhaler and spacer devices are available. Short acting, long acting beta agonist. Plenty of, you know, we got, we can choose a lot of medicines now. No set of medicines. And what is not suitable, we use another one. We are very happy to use that. In some patient may like, we may be suitable for this. And some uh, various types of inhaler. Steroid inhalers. Dose much less. Systemic effects much less. So we always insist on steroid inhaler. The only thing you have to give you correct. But at least the technique correct. It's not prescribing like tablet. Please ask them to. Uh, technique is very important. If technique is poor, then the, the drugs will not do it. Now, another thing is nebulization. Nebulizer has come. Nebulizer is not there. Uh, we can give all these medicines that give nebulizer form during emergency. Now, injections are best avoided in the practice. Injections are avoided, but in my emergency yes, GSM practice, in severe asthma, we have to give inhaler, inhaler, nebulization and injection also, but for a short duration. Not like in those days, we had to give for long time. Here, after maybe, maybe within 24 hours, we can store, continue uh, the nebulization. Next. This is the inhaler. Next. Various types of inhaler. <coughs> inhaler are two types of inhalers, controllers and Relievers. Two types of inhalers, different uh, uh, reliever and uh, control. They are long acting. There are all various types of inhalers available and devices are also plenty of uh, next. Then there are the dry powder inhaler. What is the inhalation by spray? That is the aerosol. This is dry powder inhaler. Next. This is a dry powder inhaler. Various devices are available. Nothing to worry now. You got plenty of plenty you must yourself know how to use it. Go to use others, even sometimes you know so many new medicines are come in my own video. I don't know how to use it, but let me ask them to teach how to use space. First, you must yourself familiarize. So much of spreading in the market. Next, this is a spacer device. Spacer device, sometimes, many times you cannot use directly to use spacer. Next, now a word about Xanthin literature. Or what's the use of the actually? Maybe anybody
typically Western trained person will never use xanthin. They always say you have to monitor the xanthin level in the blood. But here I found that in Indian thought it very well. And also in aminophil, this is one of the wonder drugs, at least I am concerned. You know, some patients are very fond of aminophil. There is an aminophilin uh, drug in my own ward. They like aminophil. Institution. Don't use bolus though. Institution. You know some people say, sir, aminophil is a Some resistant cases. And COPD as well. Next. Thank you very much. The time is up. I wish you a very good Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for your journey for the coming and presenting a short and crisp way and simple. You have uh, given us a lucid presentation. Thank you very much. I just have a short video. I have a second question. Can I add a few words to the talk? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yes, it actually gives results in two weeks as you 
said. But it is as good as right. as good as. Yeah, it's good, but uh, I that I for, for gene expert, I'm saying the John is good. Madam, always as you rightly told, gene, gene expert, you take it with the pinch of salt, with the background yeah. history, yes. clinical history, Correct. contact with the MDR, and other things we will take it, madam. I agree. Rightly told. Only thing, re treatment cases, gene expert can be taken at the face value because re treatment cases more MDR, but fresh case. As you rightly told, we have to take it with the pinch of salt and take the overall background and start there. We don't jump and start the MDR. Right? Yeah. No, actually, a thoracic medicine physician actually started me with the, the cancer store treatment and I had a health, uh, drug reactions and my health was spoiled uh, very much. So actually, uh, he was not uh, he was not advised uh, to go for category 1 later on for category 4. I was immediately started on category 4 and though I was a primary tuberculosis patient at that time. So yeah. it is uh, like with the caution we have to start on those drugs and we don't have drugs, many more new drugs. We have limited number of drugs for TB. So if you left and right, if you use all those drugs, we are left with no other drugs in future. Yeah, I agree with you, but if I'm this is a gene expert, not for example, it's more of for diagnosis of tuberculosis. Use it for diagnosis of tuberculosis than for uh, resistance. That's what I use it. I don't much consider. I see the clinical aspect generally I give. I don't give. But for diagnosis, very sensitive. I'm talking about diagnosis part, not the resistant part of it. Actually, they give resistance. If they give resistance with rifampicin, they think that HNASN also is uh, yes. generally resistant. They take it like that. MDRT. But retrospectively, they, they take it like that. But actually, the terms of information, all of them are sensitive. Then I talked to the head of the TRC, then he said there is a missense mutation ha happening which has been wrongly detected by the gene expert mission. Uh, so it gives a wrong result that it is functional resistance. Say so there are also uh, like false negative, false positives. So what about diagnostic accuracy? That looks so bad. It's comparatively good. I think we, I use the gene expert for diagnosis rather than for uh, uh, resistance. Yeah. That you, you use like that actually. Rather than don't worry, if the resistance is there, you see clinically where it's not. But diagnosis is very good. You will know gene expert for uh, if you did it, it means it is. And the right sample has to be sent, that's it. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.